We are almost there. And we have one more challenge for you. And while this challenge is probably going to be the most um, challenging of those that you've received so far, it is only going to be one factor in the final determination of who is actually selected as the Billy's apprentice. Uh, this challenge involves working with NGOs in Belize. You're going to be introduced to three charitable organizations. They are Hand in Hand, Liberty Children's Home, and the Center for Community Resource and Development. This challenge will test you in a variety of areas. It will test your, state, your salesmanship, your presentational skills, your organizational skills, and your ability to network and nurture relationships with clients. What are, you, what are you going to be required to do is to learn about each of these organizations, find out about their missions, their visions, what their operations do, what the needs of these organizations are. You will then be allowed to choose one of these organizations to work with. Having done that, the bank will then proceed to host a cocktail reception and you'll be required to do a 15-minute presentation where you're going to have corporate sponsors present, managers from the Billy's Bank, and obviously executives from these organizations. And at that function, you'll be required to sell this organization, to raise funds for this organization. And the individual who is able to solicit the most support, not necessarily financially, but otherwise, that will factor in our decision-making in the selection of the Billy's Apprentice. It would not be the only consideration, but it will be critical and will be central to our decision-making process. Okay? So you'll get your challenge presented to you formally shortly, and I look forward to seeing you at the cocktail reception. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, apprentices. Uh, congratulations on making it this far. My name is Gilvano Swayze. I'm the curator here at the Image Factory Art Foundation. The Image Factory is a main gallery space in Belize, which means it will be a space where you can express yourself fully. Uh, we will divide the space into three pieces, three separate rooms. I think there will be a similar challenge where you guys will have to win your space. That will determine the dimension of the space, how much lighting you get and so forth. To make the playing field even, you'll be provided with the same materials. You will get three artist assistants that will help you with your creativity and your concepts for the space. You will also get uh, paint, which will uh, basically you can use to paint the walls or put decorations on the walls or to create the atmosphere that you like. And finally, you'll be provided uh, with projectors if you will do anything multimedia, uh, tables and the same amount of chairs for you to make your guests or your audience um, comfortable. I know what room I want, or I know what space I want, so let's leave it at that. I, I got an image. <laughs> More or less, well, I do. You apply to all space. So it really matters which space I get. That's just how you present it. I have an idea of what space I want. I know what's nothing yet. Well, to start off with, Hand in Hand Ministries has been in Belize for the past 10 years or more. We are an international social services organization, and our mission is actually to transform lives by providing life essential to those who are most in need. Um, what we do really at Hand in Hand Ministries is not simply a charity case. We're not a charitable organization, or so we don't consider ourselves as being that. And we certainly do not do things for people out of pity because we're not a mercy case type of organization. What we do, we are a faith-based organization and we are God-centered and we think that we are obligated and duty-bound as Christians to serve those in need and that's what we do. We do it out of our obligation as Christian in true discipleship. Welcome to the Center for Community Resource Development which is a very um, recent organization set up here in the St. Martin de Porres area in order to address the issues of poverty as well as violence reduction. It is the idea of 
a few members of the St. Martin de Porres Parish and it has been offering programs especially for young adults as well as women in the area to improve their skills for income generation um, through three different programs which our staff will be able to share a little bit more with you. Liberty is a non-governmental organization. What we do here is to take care of children who have been abandoned, neglected, or abused. All of our children come to us through the Department of Human Services. Currently, we have children ages 2 to 16 years old at Liberty, boys and girls. So what we do is to take care of their physical and psychological needs here at Liberty. We have children that are with special needs. We have children living with HIV. We have children with other ailments. For example, we have a child with cerebral palsy, and we also have a child who's an epileptic. The challenge consists of sponsoring an NGO and making a cocktail party, trying to gain as much sponsorship you can towards this NGO. The challenge seems to be quite difficult compared to all the rest. So I guess I have to go 100%, no, 110% this time in order for me to win. I'm not worried about Kenny because Kenny is worried about himself. <laughs> Hearing the challenge, he just immediately went flat. He's like, I don't know what to do. I'm blank. I don't know where to go. Maybe it could be a strategy from him just trying to play with us with our minds because of course that's his, that's his game. But I know that he's not the type of person to be able to have proper PR and proper people skills, so that's definitely going to hinder him. I definitely feel like this is a more difficult challenge than all the rest because we need to decorate our space to attract people to it and then we also need to communicate with the people to convince them to donate to the charity. Be nice. Try it. You might like it. Thank you. I got your institution to sponsor, but I wanted to know if I can go to the outreach center. Uh, yes, you can. When do you plan to go there? Um, I was right now. About 115 children we work with, but 80 children in the outreach program, 82 children in the program who are HIV positive, those are the ones that we do follow up with. So we visit, we literally visit their homes. We literally count the pill bottles, count to see how many pills they take, you know, at the end of the month. What color is it that signify the um, orange program? That's the color. Right, blue and green, right? Mm -hmm. blue and green. We literally save lives here at the outreach center because we, want, we I could give you stories where kids come in malnourished, HIV positive, has tuberculosis as well and we 
provide medications to them and we follow up with them to ensure that the parents administer the medications correctly and you could see from past pictures and so on how they have excelled and they have grown into productive and happy little children thus far. Right, I get some information. Something going on and I really want the sponsorship for like really push and build upon right now. The garden. The garden. The garden, the greenhouse, just really push. The outside flat. Liberty Home. I'm in love with it. I love the fact that they're they're catering for children. That is great. I like how it's it's a home feeling and they take in every single child and they work psychology, they work socially, they, they do everything to incorporate this child. At the first when we heard about the organizations without even visiting them, I, my point was already liberties. I will always want liberty. My team for tomorrow is to actually let people feel the way they feel in those classrooms, that vibe that you get, that they're in here for learning, they're in here for loving, they're in here for caring. So that, that's my, my drive for the team as the children. All right, so I could take down some of these paintings. All right. I want to put like hand, hand prints yeah. around the wall so then I could get that feeling. Uh, yeah. Oh, you guys have a background. <laughs> I got the Center for Community Resource Development. I'm actually happy about that one. I will be trying to, I will try to raise funds for the culinary program. I think I can more relate to the culinary program because I can be so that's why I think I will be, it will be much better for me to try to fundraise for that program. And also they wanted a restaurant so that they can use that to train the, the um, members and also generate funds to continue to the other programs. So I think that one is the most important. Good night, apprentices. You don't go. Ken Lopez. Kenny. I'm Kim. Kim. Hi. Jared. Jared. I think night? that I could definitely see why he is the apprentice, the Belize apprentice. Because he asks the right questions, and what he does is that he picks up on the small details and then runs with it more to figure out more information about it. It just seems like he has a good personality and he gave us good advice. Because you have to envision yourself, what kind of man or woman you want to be in the future, you know? Like, we're young adults and we still have a lot to go. He seems to be very genuine and he seems to see exactly what everybody else sees in Kenneth. Oh, God. You girls getting along well with him? You get along with him. You could be honest. <laughs> Only in a group we get along. We're not even group. When we're not in group, I don't trust him at all. Really? Why not? He's sneaky. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that Kenny is not my favorite cup of ice cream. So, <laughs> I don't really feel any way. I mean... <laughs> Adrian and I have a couple personalities quite the same, but as you know, everyone is different. He seems like a fine gentleman. I guess the better person won last season. So I guess I can't see myself in his footsteps later on this year, so the plan is winning. Um, the two females, they seem a bit quiet, just a little bit. Um, that might be because Mr. Kenny is um, he's a strong, strong worded fellow, if I may say. Um, but they're very bright young ladies and I expect the best of them. And Mr. Kenny himself. It was very nice meeting you guys. Mr. Kenny? Good job. Good luck. Thank you. Well, I know I'm shy, but I'm going to try my best. I know I have to socialize more for this challenge. Well, Kenny and Judith will have a easier, an easier time because they're more social than me. But Judith, with the creativity, well, she says that from the beginning of the show, before we even started the challenges, she said that she's not creative, so she will struggle in that area. The challenge is based on salesmanship, my competitors don't have that. As the idea that I have for tomorrow's challenge is just 
placing a team whereby it's red and white for the HIV patients that the hand-in-hand -hand ministries deal with and also have ideas of having their mission and vision painted on the wall as their emblem as well. But as far as I go, I'll make sure I get their name out and of course, I'm aiming to win. Morning, Kenny. Welcome back to the Image Factory. I want to introduce you to your assistant today, Mr. Eston Young. Uh, this is a guy you need if you need a little extra strength, familiar using a level, the measuring tape or whatever. So you guide him, he'll help you, and I'm sure you guys could have a good product. All right, good luck. Welcome back to Image Factory. I want to introduce you to Inga Woods. She's a young Belizean artist. You're very lucky. She's fresh off the block. She just finished her first solo exhibit. But remember, this is your project, right? So you have to be very focused. Uh, think about the elements that you want. Inga is here to help. You have paint, you have a level, measuring tape, regular tape, screws, drills, whatever you will need. Here I have your assistant, Rahida Halak. This is Kim. Okay. All right. Uh, Rahida will be helping you on your ideas and your concepts for your design. She's very familiar with the space. She has worked here before. She's very fresh right now because she's had a, her first curatorial debut, meaning she designed an exhibit for women in art. So she has some cool ideas. You have white, black, shades of blue, some brown, some red. Right? Come on, green. Green, yes, you have green. have a huge tree with fingerprints. Ah, oh, yes, we could totally make that work. Um, do you have the logo of the um, of Liberty? No, it's just a butterfly. Just a butterfly, yeah, any a color, butterfly. Yeah, colorful butterfly. Remember, it's an oval. It's like an oval shape, not a circle. You can have it on two lines, a part of the name here, or a part of Okay, the that's, it's your idea. What happens when you do a logo? You don't want to change it because that is very crucial. So once you once you put black on it, the logo changes. And I guess we could put the butterfly would be too much there. The butterfly would be too much unless we put like a small, a whole group of butterflies flying away from the tree. Because we want to make it movement. We want mm -hmm. it to like flow. flow. Zigzag. We have to try to make sure you get it. The whole feet in one hand. Just exactly as I envisioned it. In fact, even better. Run. 
Chinees. Chinees? I'm also worried that I took a huge risk not getting wine and cheese and going a different route and doing rum punch. I'm worried that the panel, I don't know how they'll take it, if they'll be okay with it, if they'll take, they won't get the message of it, so. Well, I'm going to give them some wine, some cheese and crackers, with, also with um, olives as well. Well, that's what I bought here. Then I have the caterer bringing some more foods for me. I already bought the cheese, the crackers. Well, I need more cheese, more crackers, and wine glasses. Well, I'm not, I'm not really good at shopping. I don't really like shopping. So I was worried about that, but I'm not stressed. Interested? Mm -hmm. I have cupcakes. I have Philadelphia cheese with lizard secret sauce. Okay. It's very easy. Yeah. My name is Kenny Lopez. Kenny Lopez. I'm here with the hand in hand ministers, and today I'll be showing you and trying, you know, to try to get a pledge out of you. If okay. Any the mission statement of the Hand in Hand Ministries is an international organization that transforms lives by sharing lives essential with the poor. So it's like we, the, per the persons or the people who have what we already need, we take our time to give to the people who actually need. Well, you know, I need to show the logo. Everyone needs to see the logo and the hand in hand, wherever the adult and the child. And well, here's uh, the ribbon with a hand showing, representing the HIV AIDS that you do in the um, outreach center. And of course, we're faith-based. We are all children of God, so it's our duty as Christian people to go and help. So we have a cross, and we have a diverse hands representing that we not only help certain people, we help everyone who needs the help. Any culture, any race, a pledge card if you'd like. Just your name, the amount, and the organization where you're from, and we really appreciate it. And trust me, we will put every finance and every dollar to good use. We're gathering funds in order to build a new outreach center and when we build a new outreach center, the programs will expand whereby we can help more people as well. And the outreach center does a lot of work. But we're trying to get more people involved as well to see that the Hand in Hand Ministry... We're trying to get more people involved, we're trying to get more money. Both, because if you can also come and help us build a home without giving us any finance, we'll appreciate it as well. I really appreciate it. So you asked for 50, you gave you twice as much as you asked. So. And what the butterflies does is that the butterflies, it's their logo and they believe in it simply because they believe that it's supposed to be a freedom area for the kids and although they probably went through some different struggles before getting there, they don't want them to feel as if though it's a congested home that they're not able to express and you know, let it feel like a real natural home. Regular school, regular life, regular friends. Um, one of the things that Liberty Children's Home tries to really push with the kids is to have art so they can actually express themselves. The arts are actually done at their preschool, okay? Oh yes, we have the hands in the, in the tree just to ensure unity with the kids. So the main thing right now is like the garden, sponsorship for the garden so they could start developing their food and stuff to sell out because it's tough to feed, wash everything for 42 children. Do they produce their own um, fruit and vegetables? Yes, or? right now they have sweet pepper, they're doing um, okra, they're doing tomatoes, they're doing oranges. So. And what are your needs specifically? The needs is actually for a garden. One of the good things about this charity is that they actually utilize the money that's brought in. So what they do is that they have a garden that they're trying to raise vegetables, fruits, um, watermelons, orange, So papaya. that's the reason for your... The main... The, just to pull money for the garden? For the garden. It's a home. Okay. Everybody's treat equally. They actually have a whole display of birthdays. Every month they have cake for everybody. Everybody gets their birthday time. And so it's, it's really like a, it's like a huge home and, and everybody's, everybody's mom and dad. Yeah, but what they're trying to do is to actually open up a garden that's going to bear fruits, it's going to bear vegetables for them to have steady income coming in for themselves because it's really hard feeding 42 kids. I got my first pledge for Miss Reyes. I 
and CCRD is a program that helps young people who are underprivileged to get skills in the culinary field so that they can get a job. They also have other programs, but I chose this one because this one will help them to generate funds to gain profit for the other programs that they have. They also have other programs such as the Information Technology Program and the Community Development Program. They have some sweets, some fudge. They have 10 different kinds that they... So these are actual products from... These ones are actual. They have the rum and raisin, which is the most popular one. And they help to train individuals in areas such as the culinary field and the information technology field. And they also help to place them in different jobs. Ladies and gentlemen and invited guests, I'm Kim O'Brien and I'm fundraising for the Center for Community Resource Development. The purpose is to help young people, vulner vulnerable young people, to, to gain skills in the culinary field and also in the information technology field and the community development program. And it also helps to place them in jobs so that they can gain funds to maintain themselves. If you go out there and help people and you see, the, you see these smiles on their faces, the joy it brings to you as an individual to show that you caused that smile, you brought happiness to someone, is something that no money in this world can compare to. We all have a duty to give back and to help the children of today to grow. Whether it be a dollar, three dollars, or a big blue note, the kids of Liberty Children's Home will be thankful for the support they receive. The pledge cards, okay. I'll give you one and then you decide. We have a special guest joining us tonight. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Belize Bank, Mr. Lyndon Giuseppe. So if you want to take the room. Okay. Good to see you. So the kids are actually in sailing, the kids are in dancing, poetry. At the Liberty. They actually go to regular schools, they, they go to regular primary schools and high schools. And so within the schools, they incorporate them in all those activities as well. Did you have you enjoyed the program? Yes, yeah? I definitely enjoyed it. It's a good program. It's good for you to have an opportunity to be exposed and gain confidence. And I am coming out of my shell. Yeah. We are Christians, but we don't limit it to just Christian people. We limit it to everyone. And that is why we have the different handprints on the wall to show that diversity of culture. Mr. Gisef is a fair hands. It really took a toll on me because I said, wow, the most intimidating man is here. But I pulled through, I presented him, same way I presented everyone else before. And like I said, I really grown a lot from the first time. I feel very accomplished. I felt like I tried my best in every single competition and I pushed my all in everything that I did. And I feel like right now it's go hard or go home and that's what I did tonight. And so, so far I feel, I feel good, I'm nervous, I'm ready, I'm happy, I'm sad because tomorrow is like the last day I'll be seeing everybody, so. It was difficult with the socializing and all that because I'm shy but I, well I did socialize. Well, I felt that I did my best, so it's the hope to the chairman to make the decision. In one word to describe tonight, I'll say new. Everything was new, from the creation of all of this, to me being out there speaking to elegant people, me meeting so many new people, me going out of my comfort zone to speak to people, getting involved with an organization. It's, it's all new to me, but I pulled, I pulled through and I'm happy for that. Going into elimination, I mean, it can go anywhere, so I feel uncertain but confident that I have what it takes and I believe that everybody's seen it. But of course, again, it's all up to the panel and the chairman. I was shocked when he walked in today. But, I mean, I'm ready for, for whatever is going to happen tomorrow. You tell me if I'm going to tell you. No, tell me, no, tell me. No, me. Just know it's an early morning.
nervous, anxious, relieved, <laughs> happy, all kind of mixed emotions in one. So I'm, I'm happy and I'm ready. I'm here to be the next apprentice. If I win this competition, then I stay true to my first interview, being God, creator's creation. I'm not really nervous. If I win this competition, I'm going to be really happy. And I think I'm going to be an inspiration for people who are shy and who are not that sociable. Good morning, apprentices. Before we explain the process that we're we'll going through this morning, I want to thank each and every one of you for agreeing to participate in the program. I know it had to be an act of courage on the part of most of you to sign up for this journey, and we are certainly grateful to have you here in the finals. This morning is essentially an interview. You would be asked to present and explain the process you went through yesterday, the charity you chose, how you display the products, um, give a background to the speech you gave last night. Then I would ask the facilitators to sort of comment on the process that they observed. Kim, how do you feel? I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> don't be nervous, don't be nervous. So well, let me start with you, Kim. The charity that I had was CCRD, which is the Center for Community Resource Development. And I decided to choose the food service industry program because that program, they, will, they want to open up a cafe to help generate funds so that they can maintain the entire program. I told the people that I met that the charity was, was a really important charity because it helps to reduce crime and it helps to give people opportunities who didn't have it before. And the speech you gave, how did you craft the speech? I used PowerPoint and I said why the, um, the organization is very important. And I also told them about the different suites that they made. Is there anything else you want to say about the presentation last night that struck you or stood out for you? Mm -hmm. No? OK, very good. Judith? The charity that I received was Liberty Children's Home. I craft my presentation around making people feel like they're walking into the children's home, the loving atmosphere. So what I had was the art of the children, because the children do art. And one of the things that the children's home really pushes is the fact that they make the children feel expressive and open. So they do this way through art. So it was one of the things that I show art that was prepared from the children themselves. I had my food set up catered to what they're looking for, which is a garden. So I had a huge fruit display with different fruits because what they want is to actually start a garden to produce more fruits so they can bring in steady income. It's good to talk, to do sales with people that you complete strangers and it's a different sales when it's like executives and clients. I could have maybe research far more about the charity because some of the questions kind of struck me from a side. I'm like, and, um, but I, I, I picked back up and I helped, so. Kenny. Well, the charity I chose was Hand in Hand Ministries. I chose a charity because they do things you'd never see people doing in our society. I went out and I said, do you want to know about the Hand in Hand Ministries? They said, yes, I'm like, sure, come in. And as they stepped in, I then went on a step-by-step -step basis explaining all the programs and the main program that I, tried to, that I was trying to push the most was the Outreach Center, which deals with the infected and affected kids with HIV and AIDS. And that's why the cupcakes and the double eggs were red. On the wall, as you step in to the left, you had the mission statement. You had the big logo. And to the right, you had the hand with a ribbon inside representing the HIV and AIDS. What struck me last night was your appearance. I wasn't expecting you to come. I went with a tone whereby I tried to persuade people in a way to see that if you give funds to this organization, you will see the benefit of it and you will see how helpful it will be. And you will get that gratitude because the people in Hand in Hand Ministries do really appreciate everything. Well, we have a, an additional facilitator with us this morning. Um, this is Mr. Chris McGann. Chris is the head of our treasury operation. Chris, you want to take us through you know, what you saw in terms of Kim's presentation, her presentational style? Kim's biggest challenge was getting over her, her reservation in terms of conveying the message to people. She had an excellent display, but she struggled in sort of breaking out of her shell and, and, and discussing and bringing the message across to the potential donors at the event. Last night, Kim was able to raise $725 for the CCRD. 
Um, Kenny was very passionate about the entire thing. In the presentation, um, while well, preparing yesterday, I can see that that was maybe the first challenge. I saw Kenny look like a deer heading towards headlights because he was just like, he was lost. And I think with a blank white wall, he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. But as he spoke to his assist artist assistant, he started seeing what he was envisioning coming to light. He owned the charity that he presented on. Kenny received $1,350 for the Hand in Hand Ministries. Judy, well, she didn't get first choice. Uh, she got the charity that she wanted delivered to home, um, children's home. Uh, she went back after the tour when everybody went there. She went back and met with the children, interacted with them and met with the executive there. She went with a speech rather than a presentation and she tried to sell a story rather than, than just the organization. So I, I kind of like that. But in meeting with donors, as she mentioned in the beginning, she was a bit nervous, uh, but she was able to overcome that. And, and she opened up and started having discussions with the donors. And I think that's what helped her, having a discussion with them rather than trying to just speak to them. She raised uh, $1,125. Thank you very much, apprentices. We now ask you to leave, and we would invite you back individually shortly. Welcome back, Kim. I want to see a big smile. I want to see a smile on that face. Okay? Kim, you are an extremely complex personality. In most of the challenges, your ideas seem to have been the ideas that came to the fore on whatever team you found yourself. So you're obviously a very intelligent and bright young lady. But you have been so introverted and shy, and I don't understand why someone with your level of intelligence and brilliance, your beautiful young lady, are not, are not much more gregarious and outgoing, you know? What inspired Kim to apply to be the Billy's Apprentice? I just wanted to get a really good job with a really good business. What was the most difficult challenge from your perspective? The most difficult one was the one where my team was not united and I was trying to bring us all together, but it did not work out. And I was disappointed, so that was the most difficult one. And the last challenge, well, greeting the people and talking to people that I have never met before, that was also difficult, but I got over it. Who do you consider to have been your greatest challenger? At first, I thought that Stephen was my biggest competitor, but now I think that it's Judith. Did you make any friends? I didn't make friends. I made friends with Judith. And I talked to the rest, but I got closer to Judith than the others. You perceive Judith to be your biggest competitor, but yet she's your friend. It begs the question, was that strategic? <laughs> well, some of the guys, they tried to get to us because they wanted us to get emotional so that we would be weak. And we actually talked to each other and helped each other to stay strong. What would you say was your biggest moment or your biggest lesson coming out of this entire experience? My biggest lesson is that I need to socialize more. And as I socialize more, I'm going to become more relaxed and less, less reserved and less introverted. It's very important to socialize. Whether you win or lose, would you do it again? I would definitely do it again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back, Annie. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm good. Good? This is it? No. Okay. My question for you would be, of all the challenges that you undertook, which challenge did you consider to be the most difficult and why? The one from last night. It's something new to me. I've never promoted an NGO. I've never raised funds. I've never gone out of my way for a corporation that I have no ties with. It matured me a lot. But at the same time, it was difficult as well. Which one of the apprentices did you consider to be your strongest challenge and why? I thought Steven Gab would have been the strongest competitor for me. Now I see Judith. She's a very intelligent young lady. She's bright. She's skilled. She's very talented. So, Why do you think you should be the Billy's apprentice? I think I've gathered enough information and I've learned so many new things that I just can't wait to apply it into the bank 
and I know if I become a part of the Belize Bank, I can help in making it the most permanent bank of the region. Did you foresee that you would have ended up in the finals? Yes, I saw that I would have come here due to the fact that in every challenge I always pulled my weight, and if not, I pulled my weight and more. Do you think it was exactly what you expected? It wasn't really what I expected because I just, I saw the previous Apprentice the first season, and I just went by on that. This year, the challenges were totally different, so it caught me off guard. But I mean, I tried my best, and here I am. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Hi, welcome back, Judith. Thank you. Nervous, sir? Yes. Yeah. Judith, I would like to say that we were quite impressed with your performance throughout the entire Billy's Apprentice show. In reviewing your personal bio, I noted that um, you were pursuing a degree or associate degree in, in tourism and hosp the hospitality industry. Why would Judith have applied to be the Billy's Apprentice knowing that you know, it's a banking environment? It's tourism and I know it's completely different from banking, but just the sales aspect, the marketing, you know, all the, cre all the creativity, everything that you guys ask when it comes to being the apprentice is something that I, is my background all about. I feel like a bank really needs to know how to cater for their clients. And so I feel like I bring in that, that asset there. What did you consider to be the most difficult task in terms of all the challenges and, and why was it so? My most difficult task was this task that we had recently. I'm creative, but when it came to doing the painting it was really hard. Who do you consider to have been your greatest challenger throughout the entire taping of the show? My greatest challenge would have been Kenny. He looks at the way you, you move, what you say, how you do it, and he's able to actually use that against you in, in times when he needs. Are you willing to put the time that is required um, to make a full change from what you thought you were going to do to become a banker? Yes, I'm, I'm willing to do that change. I'm ready to, to put in that extra pong because I know it's going to be tough to just, it's not going to be an overnight work. So it'll have to be extra hours, extra days. Um, I'm ready to do that. What personally you took away from it? Patience. My mom used to always tell me that patience is virtue and it's something that I really needed to work on. And throughout these two weeks dealing with everybody in the house, the challenges, the crew, it really taught me patience. What qualifies Judith to be the Billy's apprentice? My drive, my passion, my enthusiasm. I believe that I have everything that takes and the qualities that you have, the character, to actually be the Belize Apprentice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good you. luck. Thank you. I'd like to announce the 2014 Belize Apprentice. Welcome back. You all have not made our jobs any less difficult after the interviews. Um, let me talk a little bit about each of, every, each of you. Kim, your strong points. You're silent, you're strong, you're extremely bright. You know, I was quite impressed with your performance this morning. I think this morning was your strongest performance of the entire challenge, you know? And what we saw this morning, I hope you take that wherever you go in the future with you. You were poised, you were very confident, you were very direct in your answers, you didn't waffle, you know? And I like that about you, you know? Kenny, what can I say? There are a lot of your friends who thought, you know, they were ahead of you, but you proved them all wrong, you're here this morning. You came across during the entire taping of the challenge as being very strategic, you know. You seem, you know, easy to work with, you know. And as I indicated to you before, you were on most of the winning teams in terms of the, each team you participated in seemed to have, you know, won their challenge and in part that was due to your contribution. 
Judith, very gregarious, very personable. Of all the candidates, I think you're the most articulate and the most self-confident of all the candidates. You present well, um, you weren't intimidated, you know. Wherever you found yourselves, you were able to rise to the challenge, you know, and I think you have to be commended for that. I mean, ideally, what I would like to see, I would have liked to have all of these qualities in one candidate, you know, but unfortunately, I can't, you know. So we're here this morning where we, we have a difficult task. And as I said, that task has not been made easier by your performances this morning. But I think, having said all of that, there is one candidate who rose above the fray and who we believe possess the attributes that we'd like to see in the Billy's Apprentice. So, without further ado, I'd like to announce the 2014 Billy's Apprentice. And that person who we felt best epitomized those qualities is Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You did an excellent job. You deserve to be here. And we look forward to great things from you in the future. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm a little bit taken back. <laughs> to the other candidates, we think you're also deserving. And what we've decided this morning is that we are going to award both of you, a scholarship with $10,000 to attend a university of your choice. And we will appoint a mentor to work with you as we go forward. So thank you all for participating in this program and good luck to each and every one of you. Judith, congratulations. You know, how do you feel? Happy. happy. Really, really happy because I really wanted it. I pushed. You know, I mean, it's something that I've been looking to do all my life, so I'm really glad. It's not going to be easy. Um, working in the bank is you know, difficult, it's hard, it's long hours. Um, you would need to familiarize yourself with the operations and procedures. I know you have a predisposition for sales and marketing, but we want a holistic Judith. We don't want someone who simply focuses in one particular area. But I know you're up to the challenge because you're a hard worker, you're diligent, you're devoted, and we expect great things from you. you know, so I think you're the most deserving candidate. I congratulate you on what you did today. Um, keep up the excellent work you're doing, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. We have high and great expectations of you. Okay? Congratulations. Thanks. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, I really worked hard. I was shocked, but excited. So I'm, I'm happy and I'm really, really like overwhelmed about it. So before he announced who had won, that little song, like that when the, G the drums are beating, is like. <sighs> and then the thing is, is like, he wasn't looking at me, right? So I'm like, oh God, so it's gonna be somebody from over there. And then he just like turned his eye, and I'm like, <gasps> Congratulations. My personality really stood out. And the way that I carried myself throughout the competition, I played fair, I played real, and I really gave up the character of being a Belize apprentice. Well, I'm disappointed that I didn't win, but I'm really happy that Judith won because she played the game with integrity and she also has a great personality. I definitely can go back to being that person two weeks ago. After all, this, after all the experience that I had during this challenge and learning that I need to socialize more and also that I can break out of my shell, I can never go back to that person that I was two weeks ago. Well, even in the interview, I said it myself that Judith, she's 
she's a splendid person, she's very talented, she's very skilled. But I tried my best as well. And uh, Mr. Giuseppe said it himself that it was a hard decision between the both of us. So knowing that I am at par with her, it gives me that satisfaction that I am to a winner as well. By me having the opportunity to come and be a part of this show, it's somewhat something I will never ever take back. So from the first challenge up to the fifth, I've progressed and I've matured in so many ways that it's exhilarating. I myself can't believe it sometimes. I am the 2014 Belize Apprentice. Yeah.